Hello and welcome back to the next part in which we're going to describe and how we can render the scene alternatively using other rendering pipeline and that's what we call Path Tracer here. Uh, to get us started with purpose of rendering this entire shot with Path Tracer first is to make sure that our project settings are enabled to work with Path Tracer which technically should be already enabled when you were enabling ray tracing for the project uh, from the beginning. So but just double check. Just write down path tracing and what you will see is literally hardware ray tracing as enable path tracer, which should be fine. So to view path tracer, you can just go and click the path tracer. You start seeing the a weird behavior that is taking place in the path tracer mode because all of this just started to simulate more realistic lighting compared to what can be done with lumens. On the other hand, lumens seems like a more adequate uh, candidate to uh, render, but when it comes to path tracer, What's so good about it uh, that you can actually use a limited amount of lights uh, to pr produce very stunning results. But let's start first actually setting up the sequencer that we've been working on. So let me just go open this up. So we're gonna use the same sequencer. So as we go along, let me just go and let me have a look again. So if I go and check this one and literally throw this into and check this and enable buff tracing, what you'll see, the lighting looks really stunning here, right? And that's a good thing because this is something you possibly want to go and uh, render out yourself. But the only downside in my, you might encounter while rendering with buff tracer is that it takes longer to render. But uh, before we do anything, let's go and first set up our buff tracer. So if we go select on our outliner, uh, look for post process volume. And what you want to do is look for a path tracing uh, tab, which should be at the bottom. And what you see is those that the, uh, all the settings we need to enable to make sure that we work on very well with the path tracer. So because if you set this to path tracer, you might be seeing some weird problems that you're getting on right in the camera as you're going trying to render. And some of these um, even artifacts like these snowflakes, including this very blurred sections of the glass which are right in the front they are not really properly preparing materials but also rendering the, the materials that we want for this uh, particular shot so in this case what we need to do is to make sure you enable first reference depth of field which will basically make sure it will works with uh, very high quality depth of field let's make sure that we also enable the mist material to work with so we get some additional lights and also we can also do if something that you're most likely interested in is also you can also use the reference um, atmosphere, which in this case, what's going to happen, it will also help to use skylight to contribute additional lighting that also includes the sky atmosphere that comes with it, which is very cool because that's kind of gives this additional uh, quality of this uh, lighting that might also know to mimic the natural um, light uh, that comes from global illumination and to get this really cool effect as it's like feels like it comes from the atmosphere that's why you get this bluish tint which is a really nice thing to do so it's up to all up to you we can also enable it disable it however you want to for now we can leave the noiser off because we want to use this to compare the results so the next thing we want to do is also we are going to create another console variable let's call it cve underscore path tracing so in this case what be the best thing actually to do is to start adding the console variables so first things first, I'm going to search for our screen percentage because we also want this to increase our uh, size of the final image when we can start to render. So I'm going to set this 150. And another thing, well, definitely do. Sometimes when you work with Nanite, things may not work properly uh, for the objects when are going to be rendered under the path tracer. And the reason why, because some of these assets are not being enabled to work with the path tracing through uh, ray tracing uh, rendering process, which then cost for Nanite to unfortunately, but not properly function under the path tracer. So in this case, well, there's this very cool formula. Let me just look for it. So it's called ray tracing dot Nanite enabled. Set it to mode of call one. So that means what's gonna happen. Every Nanite objects that are on the scene will work uh, under ray tracing and that also goes under path tracer at the same time because everything that relates to path tracing has also ray tracing objects that works together to generate the, the results we want to achieve 
because now what's going to happen is that when you have a ray tracing on and that's part of the path tracers uh, mode rendering it also needs to enable the other things which nanite uh, only works low mass but if you uh, use this formula to enable this nanite under ray tracing this will basically make it work uh, another thing what i'll definitely do which I, I usually do this which i don't say it's the most convenient thing to do but i always uh, tend to use this to make sure the path tracer is on but uh, i like to always set it to minus one yeah, so basically what minus one means here on the path tracing now is that all the settings that you have enabled on post process volume will uh, be also passed on to the movie render queue which will use all the settings that we have prepared here literally on the post process volume and then it will be then feed in to movie render queue so that's why it's very useful to have that uh, so next thing i will do is to save uh, my preset so i'm going to save this as path tracing the next thing i'm going to also do is to go to movie render queue and start testing this our shot. So in this case, um, I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna throw this in. Uh, I'm going to use Path Tracer. Uh, of course, we. I'm gonna make sure I disable this. I'm gonna use um, only, uh, first it's going to be EXR of course, and then uh, we are going to use Path Tracer, which is this one. We can also disable that one because we're using Path Tracer, so we don't need that different rendering. In this case, what I'm also going to do is enable the stencils that we've been using, like with Lumens, but for this time we do the, the buff tracer. Just enable, leave them as it is. And next thing, I'm going to also add anti-aliasing. Also, let's add another thing, which is our console variables. This is a very crucial part. So as you, as you can see, I just changed this uh, sample, sample count to four and I increased the special count to eight. But this may not be enough to render the stills as well as the sequences under the path tracer mode. And the reason why, because unfortunately one of the flaws for the path tracer is that it calculates every single pixel. Uh, in this case, the lights that is going to generate on each given pixel to draw this picture by multiplying the numbers of rays that's hitting the surfaces. And because we are using only those small numbers, what's going to happen? It will calculate or multiply them using also samples per pixels that are being uh, um, literally set up here on our post process volume settings. Uh, it comes together with the special and temporal sample count. So if you start multiplying with those small numbers, it's not going to be enough to fill up all these gaps that it's going to later generate. And what's going to happen? It will leave lots of noise. So to present this, let me use this uh, settings, the one I have already here. And I'm going to basically uh, test it out. Also another thing, let me quickly uh, enable the noiser and disable. So you need to make sure you enable it and then keep it at false because there's a weird thing that happens in Unreal when you render with this off. It's going to render with denoiser, even though I haven't even enabled denoiser yet. Let me go check also another thing and make sure towards the end, also add another, in this case, console variable. It's called r.pathtracing.denoiser and set to minus one, which means it will read the same values from the post process volume here settings. Save this. And then if you render this out, what's going to happen? Now you start seeing you getting that noise. And this noise is an indication that as i mentioned before it path tracer requires time to uh, render high quality images but if you also add uh, enough samples to calculate all this noise that it's literally gathering uh, because it doesn't have enough uh, 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 sort of like we call pixel per samples uh, samples to fit in and also calculate the light properly uh, hence it's giving this noise so in this case what i did to do which i would definitely recommend but uh, remember that's also uh, results with uh, longer rendering time is to first let's say set this to temporal sample count 20 or maybe go as high as 64 and because keep in mind that you already have a 1080 resolution should be pretty much enough to start off in order to eliminate uh, this uncomfortable noise but if you decide to render let's say at 4k that obviously there's more noise will gather around uh, the image knowing that's a higher resolution for each pixel to fill in so that means you need to go uh, for these values to go even higher uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you start dealing with the uh, path tracer. And of course, for this, make sure you also add console variable preset, which is this one, uh, path tracing. And with this one, you can go start and uh, then render this out. So let's me go and accept that. And now let's say render it. 
always be mindful because the more samples you're adding, the more time it will take to calculate. As you can see, currently my sub samples are running kind of slow, but it's trying to fill that 1280 samples in order to calculate, and uh, this will help to enough to reduce the noise to absolute lower numbers. So if I open this up and let's reload this R image. So let me just bring it here. So now you start seeing the noise is almost gone. So you start seeing small pieces of noise. That means we need to also start possibly increase another number of samples here on the top where it is so shows special sample count. I keep it temporal sample at 20 because we still wanted to have some good looking motion of blur that comes out the wheels as well as the car moving across this entire racetrack. So in this case, you notice this also helps to eliminate noise as far as, as more uh, we add to spatial sample count, the more we get sharper results to see uh, the greater effect. Uh, another option, which I'll definitely also recommend only if something's needed, uh, maybe for car chases or chases like in the level where I have here, when there's lots of uh, movements required in the shots. So for example, things are moving very uh, dynamic. And obviously, uh, idealistic scenario here would be is to set the denoiser uh, to be, uh, uh, let's say, enabled on. Uh, but because uh, my console variable already has set to work uh, in this case, any changes you make only works with post-process volume. That means anything I, I apply here, it will always uh, correspond to this uh, console variable here because it's set to minus one. Then I set this to enable, true. Uh, so let's give it a go and try this once more, but this time with denoiser and compare the results. And in this case, I can even uh, lower down my numbers here, knowing that I, I will have denoiser on, which means it will help to clean up any noise that comes within this uh, entire later on uh, image that I'm going to generate. So I'm going to hit render once more. And this time it will be relatively faster to get the results we want. But of course, the outcome of the final output may definitely uh, differ compared to the longer render. So now if I open this up and you'll see that the noise is on. It might think, oh, there's not much of a difference. Well, there definitely there is difference because at the moment uh, that denoiser, what well, it does, it's, it literally blurs out some of these um, instantly the parts of the image to make sure that you don't get any noise as a uh, after effect of the uh, calculating sound samples and filling the gaps in this image. So in this case, you can see my image kind of clear, but obviously as you get closer, you see the blurriness that covers the details. And obviously it's a worth having that in mind uh, when you're dealing with Pops Tracer because if you want to go for higher quality, then obviously the alternative here will be using with denoiser off, which means you don't use denoiser at all, just use subsample count and make sure you calculate higher samples when you're trying to render the final image. But of course that comes as part of the uh, downside is it's gonna take longer to render. But it gives you a, definitely a much better quality lighting uh, compared to what we have uh, common with lumens. So I've noticed that when I work with, uh, in this case, lumens, I always have to make sure I spend a lot more time on creating very amazing lighting. But whereas comes to, uh, uh, let's say using Puff Tracer is completely opposite because I can use only one light source and maybe a few tweaks and it does really give a really amazing results after all. So that's why Puff Tracer has its um, cons and pros, like every different type of rendering, uh, uh, which is kind of a normal thing to have. And that's why um, I would suggest to anyone who's got a very good computer and has enough power to do very great stunts with uh, final renders, I'll definitely recommend go for this kind of direction as using Puff Tracer. Uh, because Puff Tracer really gives amazing results with the right setup uh, and anything that uh, have lights around it and have all the photorealistic uh, assets that gives another uh, level of uh, realism uh, which we all seeking for. So that's why it's good to kind of consider both options when you're trying to work with this kind of projects. So this is the end of the video. I uh, hope you find it very useful and you know now for yourself how you wanted to render your shots uh, knowing that there's lumens as well as path tracer on available. It's entirely up to you how you want to have this as your final render. And I hope this was very useful enough to get through it and decide on your own what to do next. The next uh, chapter, which will be the final chapter, I wanted to introduce you into how we can get this to work with DaVinci, which will be doing more tweaking and, and fixing the tone mapping effects as well as lighting balance and to that so that we get the final 
uh, finalized version of our render. Uh, so that looks much stunning and more profound. Uh, so thank you so much for all this time we spent together and see you in the next part.